grace and peace. Mark chapter 15 now. Mark chapter 15. This is New Testament video 149. Mark lesson 49. Mark chapter 15 now. Mark chapter 15. Father, as we open your word now, may this edify, encourage, and enlighten, dealing with the trial of your beloved Son. In Christ's name, amen. Recall in our studies in chapter 14 of Mark, the trial of Christ began. Remember, the trial can be broken up into two parts, halves. One is the Jewish slash, quote, <laughs> religious trial. The other half is the Roman secular Gentile trial. Now, we've already covered the first two parts of the Jewish trial. So we are two-thirds to go. We're one-third through it and two-thirds to go. We have the remaining part of the Jewish trial, the last part of the Jewish phase. Then we will have the three parts of the Gentile Roman portion. The Lord Jesus Christ has already stood before Annas, former high priest. That was number one, part one of the Jewish trial. Part two of the Jewish trial was before Caiaphas, the current high priest, and the Sanhedrin. That was during the night time. This is early Thursday morning. Now, as chapter 15 of Mark opens, here's the third and final phase of the Jewish trial. This is Jesus Christ standing before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Supreme Court. I'll explain more as we go. Mark 15, 1. And straightway in the morning. The chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin, and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. Pilate. Come over to Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. That's Matthew. Luke 22. Luke 22, 66. And as soon as it was day, daylight hours, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I tell you, ye will not believe. And if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. 23, verse 1. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. That's Luke. We'll come back to Mark. Mark 15, Mark chapter 15, verse 1. So cock crowing, cock crowing has already passed. Remember that was Peter's denials 
of Jesus. Peter denied him thrice, and only in Mark, characteristic of Mark, the cock, the rooster, crowed once after the first denial, and it crowed again after the third denial. Before the cock crowed twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. So that time marker there, we estimate it's after 3 a.m. It's Thursday morning, nighttime, darkness. Now from the book of John, we'll see that Christ stands before Pilate the final time around 6 in the morning. So we can estimate this is between 3 and 6 in the morning. This is not his second appearance before Pilate yet. This is his first appearance. But we can, we can establish a window of time here. Mark will inform us Jesus is crucified at 9 in the morning. So it's somewhere between 3 and 6 here in the morning, Thursday morning. Mark 15, verse 1. It's after sunrise now. Remember the Jewish law, outside of the Bible, of course, the Jewish law stipulated that trials of this magnitude uh, that is, one that would result in the death penalty. Needed to go on for at least a day. At least a day or two days. Have a night time of making sure that they were putting a guilty man to death and not an innocent man. Now, instead of affording Christ with a trial that's fair, this is a hasty trial, this trial will not even last a half a day. And they were not to have nighttime trials, remember. They broke their own Jewish law to try Jesus here. But just so as to attach some legitimacy here, the Sanhedrin convenes one last time so as to make their illegal ruling. He's guilty of death. We looked at that already. So as to make that illegal ruling, that illegal trial, quote, legal, now they meet in the daytime, in the daylight hours. And they simply confirm what they already did back at night. Like I said, this is a sham. This is, this is, is, this, this is a joke. This is a stain on the high priest. The high priesthood of Israel. There's no justice here. There's no fairness there's no impartiality. Legal corruption, political corruption, shouldn't surprise us today. It's occurring here in Christ's earthly ministry 20 centuries ago. This convening of the council is brief. They formally sentence him to death. But they can't put him to death because Rome is over them. So they will have to consult with Rome, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, to carry out, Pilate, Pontius Pilate will carry out the sentence, crucifixion. We can go to John, John 18, 31. 
Look at John 18, 31. We looked at this earlier. We'll look at it again to refresh our memory. John 18, 31. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Had the Jews put Christ to death, it would have been by stoning. However, prophecy foretold he would be crucified. What is the mode of execution according to the Romans? It's crucifixion. It's crucifixion. So prophecy will be fulfilled by the Jews conspiring with the Gentiles, the Romans. That's Psalm 2, that's Acts 4. We'll look at that in a later study. Perhaps we'll get to it in this lesson. I don't know yet. <laughs> the Jews can't execute anyone because they're under Roman rule. So these apostate Jewish religious leaders resort to asking for Pilate's assistance in their fulfilling prophecy. Hmm. They bound Jesus, Mark 15, 1, and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. He's transported like a criminal. Like a common criminal. He doesn't resist. He doesn't try to escape. He's chosen to drink of the cup of his father's wrath. And that includes being subjected to the hands of sinful men and what they do to him. He will see to it that his heavenly Father's will is accomplished. One of his own has betrayed him. Judas Iscariot into the hands of these unbelieving religious leaders of Israel. Now those unbelieving religious leaders of Israel have delivered him to the Gentiles. His own nation has betrayed him to heathen people. Pilate, Pilate. His full name, of course, in Matthew, Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate. He was the prefect or the governor of Judea from about A.D. 26 to 36. Secular history, world history, Roman history, Jewish history. His headquarters were in Caesarea. I'll get my map. Pontius Pilate actually lived in Caesarea here on the Mediterranean coast. Now Pilate is present in Jerusalem. He's living in a palace that belongs to Herod. Pilate is temporarily in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. Pilate has traveled some 45 miles, 70-something kilometers, from the, from the northwest of Jerusalem. Pilate has traveled to live in Jerusalem for a time so as to keep peace. Because we have all these several hundred thousand, if not a couple million Jews gathered for Passover in Jerusalem. If there's a fight, there's a riot, civil disturbance, well, where's the governor of Judea? He's far away over here. So as to maintain peace, he's staying in Jerusalem for Passover. Pilate is present in Jerusalem.
1961, archaeologists excavated what is called the Pilot Stone in Caesarea on the Mediterranean coast. Indeed, just as the Bible declares, the inscription on that stone confirmed there was a governor of Judea at that time named Pontius Pilate. The Bible is historically accurate. The Bible is scientifically accurate. The Bible is not a book of fantasy and fiction and superstition. Its claims are validated outside of it. We don't need that validation. We know it's the Word of God. We know that the Bible is without error. When the, when the critics of the Bible whine and complain about this mistake and that mistake, you know, for such an ancient book, we wouldn't expect it to be this precise. And yet it is. It's, it's God's book. And we either believe that or we don't. It's our choice. Free will. Indeed, there was a man, Pontius Pilate, who did reign over Judea in the first century. Various insurrections will occur between the Jews and Pilate. The Jews don't like Pilate. He's gotten in trouble with the Roman emperor before because the Jews reported him to Caesar, Tiberius Caesar. Now, Pilate will be in a conundrum. We'll say more about that later. Now that the Jews have brought Christ, Pilate he's getting unwanted attention. When Judas realized, Judas Iscariot realized, that the council, that the Sanhedrin put Christ on trial in the morning and condemned him to death. Matthew alone records this. Matthew 27, 3 through 10, Judas Iscariot killed himself. He hanged himself. He hanged himself. So Judas is dead now. Christ is standing before Pilate. And the Gentile part of the trial is underway. The first part. So Mark 15 Verse 2. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate Marvel. So Matthew 27, 11. And Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Remember Isaiah 53, 7. We looked at that already. He opens not his mouth. We can look at it again. Isaiah 53, verse 7. Isaiah 53, verse 7. He was oppressed.
oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. So as to fulfill Bible prophecy, when the Jews asked Jesus a question, he stayed silent. Now he does it with the Gentiles. Pilate asks him a question. Shh, silence. By remaining quiet, something so simple, that is a fulfillment of Isaiah. The Lord understands. Recall, the Lord Jesus is aware of his Father's will, his Father's word. And he sees himself in those Old Testament passages. He studied the Hebrew Bible. That's what I should be doing. He has been conducting his earthly life in accordance with the pattern that the Old Testament prophets laid out. And there he is. He's laying them out in his life. So if we come to Mark 15, back to Mark 15, he stands before Pilate. The chief priests are accusing him of many things, but he answers nothing. Then when Pilate asks him, he answers nothing. There. Pilate marvels. Come back to that. Luke 23 Luke 23, verse 1. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. John. Come over to John. John 18. John 18, 28. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover. This is what Mark will call the Praetorium, the judgment hall, where Pilate is. Pilate then went out unto them. John 18, 29. What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Then Pilate that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. The Lord had told them, I will be crucified, not stoned to death, I'll be crucified. I'll be crucified. Now that the Jews have gotten Pilate involved, indeed, Jesus will be crucified, not stoned to death. They accuse Jesus before Pontius Pilate. Come back to Mark 15. They had accused Jesus of blasphemy. Recall. He's worthy of death because he contradicts their religion. Not the Hebrew Bible but rather their religious system of unbelief. He's the fulfillment of their Hebrew Bible. Their pure religion. 
would support Christ since they have corrupted the Bible, since they've corrupted, they've perverted God's religion, they can't see Christ as a fulfillment of the pure religion that God gave them on Mount Sinai. It's the Jews' religion now. Corrupt. Corrupt. The Lord Jesus is silent. He doesn't answer. He doesn't answer. Now we notice. Come back to come back to Luke. Come back to Luke. See, Luke informs us here. Luke informs us. Luke 23, verse 2. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ the King. Now, Pilate is a, is a political man. He's, a, he's Roman. He doesn't care about Jewish religion. So, the priests of Israel, the chief priests, the scribes, the elders, the Sanhedrin, as they bring Jesus before Pontius Pilate. Pilate doesn't want to hear about, he's a blasphemer of our God, Pilate. Put Jesus to death, he's a blasphemer. Pilate couldn't care less about matters concerning Jewish religion. So, what the corrupt Sanhedrin did was change the charges. Now there's a new charge leveled against Jesus. It had been blasphemy. Hadn't it? He's a blasphemer. He's worthy of death. They've changed the charge. Because that wouldn't stand in Pilate's court. Pilate, Jesus, discourages us from submitting to Rome. Ah, oh. Now Pilate would be concerned with that. He's an insurrectionist. A seditionist. He threatens to overthrow the Roman government. Pilate, as Caesar, as Caesar's representative here, as Tiberius Caesar's man in the land, you have to do something about this Jesus of Nazareth who claims to be a king and says we shouldn't pay taxes to Rome. That is an outright lie. Religious leaders in Israel are lying. Surprise! They've already been doing that. They've been doing that for some time. Corrupt. No wonder the nation Israel is in unbelief in Christ's earthly ministry. Their religious leaders are in unbelief. Dishonest. None of them want the truth. There's a believing remnant. But the vast majority is comfortable where it is. In spiritual darkness and Satan's policy of evil. Back when Jesus was in the temple, earlier in the Passion Week, it was on Tuesday, it's Thursday morning now, just a few days prior to his trial, he was in the temple. Mark, Mark chapter 12. They tried to catch him in his words earlier. The Pharisees and the Herodians, they had the three trick questions to make Jesus look foolish before the crowd in the temple. He answered all three questions. Then he had a question that they couldn't answer. And he made them look like fools before the crowd. Well, Mark 12, remember the Pharisees and the Herodians, verse 13, they tried to catch him in his words. 
Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Verse 15, shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny, that I may see it. And they brought it. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the, thing that, the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Should Israel give tribute to Caesar? Should Israel pay taxes to Rome, to the Roman government, to Tiberius Caesar? Yes, Israel should pay taxes to Rome because until the second coming of Christ, Daniel 2 tells us that the Jews will be under the Gentiles' governmental authority. The Jews have to submit to Rome. So that was an outright lie spoken before Pontius Pilate. The chief priests, the scribes and the elders, the Sanhedrin, they accused Jesus of opposing Caesar. And it was a lie. Forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. Lie. Jesus said the exact opposite. They're not interested in the truth. They, their sole purpose is to make Pilate's mind evil affected so that he condemns Jesus. Jesus is a threat to the Roman government, Pilate. Aren't you an official of the Roman government? Shouldn't that bother you? Won't you do something? Now see, Pilate, I, I told you already, Pilate has had trouble with the Jews before. The Jews have had trouble with Pilate. Pilate is on thin ice here. He's, he has to give Israel a hearing here. In, he has to entertain them in order to be on their good side, remain on their good side. Appease them. So Pilate is willing to listen to their complaints about Jesus of Nazareth. We will notice in Mark, Mark 15, 5, But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. The Lord doesn't answer the chief priests, the elders, the scribes, and their accusations against him. It's useless to say anything here. Fabricated charges. They changed the charges. He went from being a blasphemer to being an opposer of Rome. Forbidding to, to give tribute to Caesar. He's an insurrectionist. By the way, they didn't accuse Jesus of that earlier. He had no time to even prepare a legal defense against the charge. See, this is all messed up. They don't let him have witnesses. They didn't let him have witnesses. Witnesses at his Jewish trial. To support his innocence. Now, they changed the charges without him knowing it. They didn't inform him. They bring him before Pilate. And they accuse him of something else entirely. <laughs> dishonesty. This is dishonesty. Jesus stands before Pilate, silent. Pilate marvels. Pilate is amazed. He's surprised. Never has a man 
like this Jesus of Nazareth has been in my courtroom. Pilate had presided over trials before. Doubtless there were men accused in his courtroom and the accused had cried out, I'm innocent, I'm innocent, I didn't do it, I didn't say it. Christ, when he is accused, says nothing. So, as this trial progresses, Pilate becomes more and more aware that there's something unique about this Jesus of Nazareth. He can't quite put his finger on it yet. There's something special. Never has a man come in like him into this place before me. If Jesus were innocent, why doesn't he deny? He is innocent, isn't he? Did he ever claim to want to overthrow the Roman government? No. Did he ever claim Israel shouldn't submit to Rome's oppressive taxation? No. Exact opposite. Until the second coming, Israel, you are under Caesar. You are under the Gentiles. You do pay tribute to Caesar. Well, why isn't Jesus denying the charges then before Pilate? How can he be so silent, so quiet, as these outrageous accusations are being hurled against him? False accusations. Pilate just can't seem to grasp what's going on. How can he be so silent as these outrageous accusations are being hurled against him? How can he be so silent? as these outrageous accusations are being hurled against him. Pilate just can't fathom this. John 18. Yes, there's a lot of flipping back and forth. John 18. We compare Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is Bible study. Study. We study the Bible. By the way, I'll pause to say this. When we were in Matthew 27, verse by verse, a long time ago, I spent seven lessons covering this material. We went to Mark 15. We went to Luke 20. Three, we went to John 18, John 19. We are somewhat summarizing here because Mark is briefer than Matthew. Matthew contained material that Mark doesn't have, that Luke doesn't have, and John doesn't have. So if you want to watch those seven lessons from Matthew 27, we go into greater detail. Those would be New Testament videos, 91 to 97, Matthew lessons 86 to 92. Those were the Matthew 27 lessons in greater detail. New Testament videos 91 to 97, Matthew lessons 86 to 92. That's the titles, the codes of the videos you should watch for more details. All right, John 18, John 18, John 18, 33. John 18, 33. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again this is unique to John. 
characteristic of John, and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Have, have you come to that conclusion yourself, Pilate, or did somebody else make you see that? Hmm. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Derogatory there. That's a, that's a, a dirty name. Pilate looks down on the Jews. I'm a Roman. I'm not a low-down Jew. Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. Whoop! What hast thou done? Mm hmm Israel, Israel and the chief priests, Israel and her chief priests had delivered Jesus betrayed Jesus over to the Gentiles. Just what I told you earlier. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world, not of this evil world system. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now, and that word now is important, it's not in, in modern English versions, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Now is not the time for me to reign. Now is my time to go to the cross. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? What does truth have to do with this? We're not interested in the truth. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. I find no fault in him at all. Luke 23. Luke 23. This is unique to Luke. Characteristic of Luke. Luke 23, 4. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. Yes, he's G Jesus of Nazareth. He's from Galilee. Nazareth is in Galilee, up north. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. Herod was from up here. This is Herod Antipas. Herod Antipas, Tetrarch of Galilee. Remember? Herod is from this area. That's where Christ is from, Nazareth here. Herod is here. Herod Antipas is here. He's down in Jerusalem too. He's having a good time for the Passover as well. Vain, empty religious system. Herod is not a believer. He pretends to be. Herod is an Edomian. He's a descendant of Esau, an Arab. But he is Jewish in religion. Not a blood Jew. But a religious, should I say, re, he's Jewish in religion. I don't want to say he's a religious Jew because he's not a Jew. In the realm of religion, he's Jewish, but not by blood. Antipas, remember? Herod Antipas, Mark 6, about a year and a half prior, Herod Antipas had beheaded John the Baptist, Messiah's forerunner. Herod Antipas, a son of Herod the Great, the Herod the Great of Matthew chapter 2, that slaughtered Jesus' contemporaries when the Lord was just a few years old. 
Herod Antipas' father had killed Christ's generation there in Bethlehem, Judah. The little children attempting to kill Christ. Well, now Herod Antipas, the son of Herod the Great, he has killed John the Baptist. And he gets to preside over the trial of Christ. So here is Herod. Remember, this is only in Luke. Luke 23, 8. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him. And he hoped to have seen, have seen some miracle done by him. Remember, when Herod heard, this is... Mark 6 and Matthew 14. When Herod heard of Jesus performing those miracles, when he heard of Jesus' ministry, he thought that was John the Baptist. Reincarnated or resurrected or whatever. His guilty conscience was pricked. Well, now I can finally see this Jesus of Nazareth. Then he questioned with him in many words, Luke 23, 9, but he answered him nothing. The Jews had accused Christ, asked him, Christ answered nothing. Pilate asked Christ, Christ answered nothing. Herod Antipas asked Christ's words, Christ answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. That was unnecessary. Pilate did this as a political favor. Pilate is an opportunist like any good politician. What can he do to make himself look good among his peers and be popular with the people? May not be correct, may not be ethically right, may not be just, but he will do whatever is necessary to stay in office. So he tries, and he does, he gets on Herod's good side, Herod Antipas's good side. Look at Luke 23, 12. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at for before they were at enmity between themselves. They didn't get along. Now hatred for Jesus Christ unites them. Opposition to Jesus Christ, hatred for Jesus Christ, brings together strange bedfellows. The Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't like each other, but they did dislike Christ. Christ Jesus. So they were united there. They had a common cause. Herod and Pilate didn't get along. But to put Christ to death, yes, we agree on that. And we're, we're friends. We're buddies. We're pals. This is sickening. Luke 23. Herod was just curious. I want to see a miracle. Oh yeah. You want to see a miracle, huh? This is no sincere seeking of the truth. This is all a sham. Hypocrisy. They make fun of Christ. They set him at naught. His men of war. Herod's men of war. Luke 23, 11. They mistreated the Lord. They ridiculed him. They arrayed him in a gorgeous robe. Herod doesn't want to believe the Bible. These men of war, muscular, cruel men, I think it's implied here 
they did more than verbally assault him. There was some physical violence done against him, against the Lord here. Back to Mark. Back to Mark 15. Back to Mark 15. Mark 15, 6. Now at that feast, he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. That's Pilate. Pilate is trying to get on the Jews' good side. Doing what he can to appease them. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. The chief priests, they don't like Jesus because he's a threat to their position. They will lose power over the nation if they accept him. They're envious of Jesus. They don't like him getting the attention. They want the attention. They want the people to worship them. They want the people to admire them. They don't want the Lord to be admired, to be exalted. See, it's our nation, greedy, sinners here. God had put Israel's spiritual leaders in the power to teach them, to teach Israel His Word. These chief priests, these scribes, these elders should be operating with the wisdom of God, guiding the nation into the truths of the Hebrew Bible. They aren't. They're not encouraging the people to come to Jesus Christ. They're encouraging the people to turn away from Jesus Christ. And even Pilate is aware of it. Even Pilate sees it. Pilate is a Roman. Pilate is an non Jew. Even he has spiritual eyes to see this. Like I said, Pilate is becoming more aware of what is happening here. So the Roman trial is winding down. Christ stood before Pilate once. Pilate sent Christ to Herod. Herod has sent Christ back to Pilate. Come over to Matthew, Matthew 27, 15, Matthew 27, 15, you will remember they had accused him before Pilate earlier, 12, 13, Jesus answered nothing, Pilate asked, hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? Verse 14, and he answered, him to never a word in so much that the governor marveled greatly. That was before Pilate the first time. Now the second time. Matthew 27, 15. Now at the, that feast, the governor was one. Accustomed is, a, is an annual habit to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Okay. Go over to Luke. Luke 23. Luke 23, verse 13. 
And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I, having, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him. And lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast in the prison. The Passover meal is approximately 12 hours away. Remember, this is the nation's Passover. Christ had already observed Passover, held a Passover with his disciples hours before. Back at just prior to his arrest. We know Passover, the nation's Passover, the regular Passover, Christ held in earlier, the regular Passover is tonight. Christ will die at the time they're killing the Passover lambs. The nation is killing the Passover lambs. Passover itself, though, is still future. Remember John 18, John 18, 28? Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas under the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. See, the Jewish religious leaders haven't eaten the Passover yet. And, and notice, notice how warped their thinking really is. We need to be ceremonially clean to eat Passover tonight. So we can't walk into that old Gentile common hall there of Pontius Pilate. We can't walk there. That's where the Gentiles walk. Old filthy Gentiles. If we walk in the Pilate's common hall there, the Praetorium, ah! We're ceremonially unclean. Came the Passover tonight. <laughs> There's something worse than having dirty feet to eat the Passover. You know what it is? It's what they're guilty of doing. They've plotted, and they are still, scheming to put the innocent Son of God to death. That doesn't bother them. What bothers them? Not their dirty hearts. Not their unbelieving hearts. Not their lies, their false witnesses. What bothers them is, can you walk in the Gentiles' territory? We'll be filthy and we can't eat the Passover. We won't be clean to eat the Passover. Ah. Uh, Priorities all messed up. Priorities all messed up. Out of order. Remember in Mark chapter 7, Matthew 15, what was their concern? Washing with those hands there. The washing of hands before, during, and after eating. The trickle of water this way and the trickle of water that way. Ceremonially clean hands, but dirty hearts inside, filled with sin. They're more concerned with having clean hands than having clean hearts. What counts before God? Clean hearts. Their sin problem taken care of. They don't want, they don't want their sin problem to be taken care of, but they are religious. We won't walk into that Gentile place. Because then we're not fit to eat the Passover. Mm -hmm. And yet, 
it doesn't bother them that they've lied about the innocent Son of God. It doesn't bother them. bother them they're putting an innocent man to death. Do you find confused religious people like that even today? There's a notable prisoner. Pilate, so as to do the Jews a favor, pacify them, appease them, please them. I release a man who's a criminal. Every year I release a man at Passover who shouldn't be released. But I'll do it this year too. See, Pilate, Pilate knows there's something going on with Jesus that's supernatural. He can't quite establish what's going on yet. But he's been evading a responsibility here. I don't find any fault with this man. Pilate tried to get out of putting Christ to death there. Pilate even sent him to Herod, hoping to get rid of Jesus and ease himself of the responsibility. And now Pilate tries to release Jesus. He's hoping maybe Israel will let Jesus be that criminal to be released. So Pilate is trying to get out of this. His wife had even warned him. We may look at that. His, his wife had even warned, them, warned him, don't get involved with this man. I've had a dream about him. Leave that Jesus of Nazareth alone. There's a notable prisoner. His name is Barabbas. He's a notable prisoner, Matthew records. He's guilty of what? Insurrection, rebellion against the government, murder and robbery. Oh, what a nice citizen. What a law-abiding citizen. No. <laughs> One of the worst citizens. Barabbas represents somebody and we'll leave it at that for now. John has him as a robber. Barabbas is quite a criminal. Mark 15, Mark 15, 11. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. See, Pilate is trying to get out of it. The Jews are insistent, however, that Jesus be crucified. Matthew 27, 19. I guess we'll look at it. Characteristic to Matthew. Matthew 27, 19. When he was set down on the judgment seat as Pilate, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man, that righteous man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. 
the governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Let him be crucified. Pilate's wife, she sees Jesus as a just man. Matthew 27, 19. Many times, Pilate himself calls Jesus innocent. Without fault. Mark 15, 14. What evil hath he done? Matthew 27, 23. What evil hath he done? Luke 23, 4. I find no fault in this man. Luke 23, 14. I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof you accuse him. John 18, 38. I find in him no fault at all. John 19, 4. I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. John 19, 6. Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Remember... When the Lord Jesus Christ had entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, I pointed that out to you back in Mark 11. I have told you in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 12, the Passover lamb was to be selected on Abib 10th and watched. And on the 14th, I'd even kill it. They were to look for any problems with the lamb, any disability, any sickness. I want you to see Exodus 12. Exodus 12. Look at Exodus chapter 12. Verse 5, your lamb shall be without blemish. Nothing wrong with it. And they were to watch it until they were to kill it. Pin it up and then kill it on the 14th at even. Israel saw Jesus Christ in their temple, beginning with the triumphal entry, quote, triumphal entry, Palm Sunday, all the way through to this present time now. Even during his trial, they could see him. He demonstrated he was the wise son of God. He was the just son of God. He defended his father's word. He answered their Bible questions. He healed the sick in the temple, the lame, the blind so on. He proved beyond any shadow of a doubt he was the lamb without spot, without blemish. He's the Passover lamb. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. He's the fulfillment of the Passover type. He's the anti-type. Israel should have been watching him up to this point, especially these last four days. They should have watched him in faith. Instead, they watched him in unbelief. Had they seen him in faith, they would have seen him fulfilling Bible prophecy. Hey, he is our Messiah. Instead, they're opposed to him, aren't they? Now, watch. 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he's sinless. No guile was in his mouth. He knew no sin. 2 Corinthians 5. 
First Peter 2. Did Israel see him as sinless, as without spot, without blemish? No. They found fault with him, didn't they? They called him a blasphemer. They accused him of corrupting, perverting their nation, misleading their nation. It was really the other way around. They were perverting his nation. He wasn't perverting their nation. Israel didn't see him as being without spot and without blemish. Who did see him without fault? It's entered into the record of Scripture forever. The Gentiles. Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate. Somebody who didn't even have the Hebrew Bible. He saw Jesus as an innocent man. Israel, who had the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, the Hebrew Bible that pointed to the sinlessness of Christ, Israel missed it, didn't they? Unbelief. It was willful, deliberate, intentional unbelief. The Bible will profit us nothing if we don't believe it in the heart. Remember that? Israel possessed the Bible. The Bible should have pointed, it, pointed them to Christ. It would have pointed them to Jesus Christ. It didn't. Not because there was something wrong with the Bible. Something wrong with Israel. Heart problem. It's not an evidence problem. It's a heart problem. Pilate saw the evidence. He tried Christ himself. He heard Jesus speak. He saw Jesus behave. Pilate said there's nothing wrong with this man. No fault in Jesus. I have examined him. I've examined him. I find no fault in the man. I find no fault with the man. Over and over and over and over, Pilate said that. Israel couldn't even say that one time. She didn't say it even once. Israel had nothing but critical remarks about Jesus. Oh, and please listen. There is nobody more dangerous in the world than somebody who has a Bible but doesn't believe it in the heart. They are worse off than somebody who doesn't have the Bible. Really? Really? God gives us over to what we want. And how horrible it is that often people who have the Bible really don't want it. I hope we aren't like that. I hope that the Bible means everything to us and that we're willing to part with our denominational system, our sect, our cult, our religious traditions. If we come to the place where we have to decide, is it the Holy Bible or the church tradition? I sure hope we make the wise choice. The Holy Bible is right. Everything else is wrong. Israel, however, apostate Israel, doesn't see the truth and doesn't want to see the truth. So Israel decides. Pilate gave them a choice. Do you want Jesus or Barabbas? Who do you want? Mark 15, 11. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. The chief priests. Ah, oh, these aren't atheists. These aren't agnostics. These are, quote, Bible teachers. The very religious leaders who should have in encouraged Israel to believe on Jesus Christ or discouraging Israel from believing on Jesus Christ. And they are pressuring the people. Choose Barabbas. 
Choose the sinner over the Savior. Barabbas should be freed. The guilty man should be liberated. The innocent man, kill him. See how messed up this is? It's all flip-flopped. What's right is wrong. What's wrong is right. It shouldn't shock us today. It's the same way. Here it is in Israel. That's how it is. Barabbas. Remember in chapter 14 of Mark, Abba, Father. Jesus was praying, Abba, Father. Abba is Aramaic for Father. Barabbas. Barabbas. Son of the Father. Barabbas. Barabbas. Barabbas is the son of his father. One son will be liberated to live and the other son will be condemned to die. We have the son of the father, Barabbas. You're of your father, the devil. John 8, 44. We also have Jesus Christ, the son of of the blessed, the Son of God, the Son of the living God. The guilty Son is freed and the sinless Son takes His place. Substitutionary atonement. Barabbas symbolizes someone. You know who that someone is? It's man. Barabbas symbolizes man. Barabbas doesn't want to submit to authority, huh? He's a seditionist and insurrectionist. He's trying to overthrow government. That's man. You're not going to reign over me, God. I am my own authority. I'm my own God. I rule over myself. I don't need you. That's Israel. That's sinful Israel, too. Sinful man, mankind, as well as sinful Israel. Barabbas. Barabbas is a robber. He's trying to steal. He, he, he is. <laughs> Let me be honest. He has. He has stolen what doesn't belong to him. That's Israel. That's man trying to steal. Really, stealing God's glory, stealing God's praise, and making himself the object of worship. This isn't God's nation. It's our nation. This isn't God's creation, it's mine. I won't submit to him. A murder. Remember, Cain killed his brother Abel. He was of that wicked one. Genesis 4, 1 John 3. John 8, 44 call Satan a murderer from the beginning. Uh, Barabbas is sinful man, sinful Israel. Uh, they're murdering Jesus Christ here. Barabbas is the sinner. He's sinful, rebellious mankind, worthy of death. He's in prison, huh? He's subject to Satan. So Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, God there, He knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5.21, but took upon Himself our sins and was punished in our place. So, when Pilate agreed to let Barabbas go, those soldiers went to Barabbas' cell, come free, Barabbas, get out, don't come back. Barabbas, he's enthusiastic. I can't believe it. I'm freed. Yeah, Barabbas, 
but not because you're innocent, because somebody else is taking your place. Jesus of Nazareth will die instead. He will take your place on the cross, Barabbas. He will take your place on the cross, Barabbas. The just for the unjust, 1 Peter 3.18. Through Christ's finished cross work, we sinful sons of Adam can become the sons of God. We can escape the prison of Satan, sin, the world, through faith in Jesus Christ alone as our substitute propitiation, fully satisfying payment or sacrifice for our sins. Romans chapter 3. We're under sin. We're captive to Satan when we enter this world. Born in sin, I was shaken in iniquity. Psalm 51, that's David. That's everybody. Every person, save the Lord Jesus Christ, came into this world a sinner. Yes, even Mary was a sinner. Mother Mary was not sinless. Mother Mary needed a Savior just like everybody else. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. Barabbas is freed, the sinner is freed, because the Savior takes his place. The Passover lamb will die. The true Passover lamb will die. That's Jesus Christ. And he will die at the same time the animals are dying on Passover here. The lambs. All right. That's enough. We'll continue next time. Mark 15, verse 15. We'll start there next time. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of study. As we continue, edifying courage and enlighten us in Christ's name, amen.